to the Sunny Saudade project. As you can see, I'm currently in Portugal. I'm in Porteira. I had to come here for family emergency and I figured might as well do a bit of filming. I'm currently in front of the cafe Quinta do Rumão. It has my surname, so I thought, why not come here for a nice galão e turrada? coffee. I'm now making my way downtown into the restaurant and shopping area of Quarteira. So a really funny thing about the, uh, the the coffees in Portugal is that when you order a toast they butter the bread on both sides of the toast. I give the seal of approval. The other great thing about it is that you actually dip the bread in the coffee and then once you eat it you can see the coffee slowly shrinking. It's a very good technique if you're in a rush because if it's really busy they will oftentimes make the coffee really hot and you can't drink it straight away. I'm currently standing on the main entrance of the main avenue of Porteira. Recently, they have implemented a greenway where if you have a bicycle or a scooter, you can traverse through town. So let me just show you. I don't know if I can zoom in, see? This little green line behind me, you, you can circulate all the way through the main avenue of Porteira. Very useful if you want to exercise. de Freguesia, Centro Autártico de Quarteira. This is where you sort out all of your paperwork, pay your bills, electricity, all that kind of jazz. Whenever there's a festival around or the popular saints around June or even Carnival, this is where they would have little decorations and buntings and it's lovely. I'm making my way down to the fish market. I hope you guys are excited because I did wake up fairly early. So I should be able to, yeah, maybe we can ha have a good catch, eh? Love it. All right, see you guys in a minute. It doesn't get more Portuguese grandma like that. The CCTV Portuguese cameras. She's fairly handsome as well. Hey guys, so right behind me is a fish market with the local vegetables and fruit. Unfortunately, it is a Sunday and Sundays in Portugal means everything is closed. So, unfortunate. However, we will be coming back to this place and we'll be doing some footage on it. Come with me, let's explore the seaside. <music> I would love to do a video on this restaurant right here, but the music is so damn loud. I had to stand a little bit behind because the music is too goddamn loud. This restaurant is actually the chain that Tico Tico own, which is called the Rosa Branca. If you guys are interested in having some seafood, it is one of the restaurants that we recommended in one of our other videos. Check it out. And yeah, it's a really good restaurant, but it's too noisy there. So walk, to, walk with me. Also, it is currently February and it is probably 20 degrees, so... <laughs> 
It is very warm for this time of the year. So Corteira initially was a very small fisherman town. A lot of people migrated from Angola over to here. So you have a lot of different diverse um, cultures in Corteira. So this seafront that I'm currently walking on goes for miles and miles and miles. And you can just go out for a good run here. You can just go out for a nice walk after a, a nice lunch or dinner. That's the good thing about when you live abroad. In a place like this, you just want to leave your house. You're incentivized to, to go and explore, you see? Right behind me, there's a sea gallery available if you guys are interested, in just to, if you like going to museums and all that. And also, in this big town square, where's my hand? Right behind me. Whenever there's football on, the World Cup or the Euro Cup, they'll put a massive TV and everyone in Corteira will come here and watch. When Portugal was playing in the Euro and I was here a couple of years ago, it was nuts. It was completely crazy. Right behind me, we are in the Pastelaria Beira Mar. It is one of the best places to get pastries in Corteira. They have the best pastéis, the nata and traditional cakes and the marzipans, all that goodness. So I'm going to go in and get some for myself. It is a Sunday, so it's fairly busy to get in. So I'll try and get a little bit of footage if I can. Wish me luck. I suppose going to the most popular pushlery in Corteira during a weekend before lunchtime is a bad idea. But I got myself a little box. It comes with little cute decorations and whatnot. So I bought a pastel de nata and a strawberry tart and I paid two euros ninety for that. That was super cheap. Oh, I forgot to mention. Things in Portugal are relatively cheap. If you if you know where to go and don't go to all of the tourist trap places, um, the, the, the cafe I went to before, I had, um, I had a galant, which is like a one-shot latte, I suppose, and some toast. I paid about one euro sixty for those, so I've basically spent less than five euros and I bought a coffee and a toast and two pastries, you know. If you tried to do that in London or anywhere else in the UK, you would have been looking at at least a tenner. So. I am now headed to the main avenue in Corteira and what's really good about Corteira is you have free Wi-Fi in the main streets. So pretty useful if you want to do research or if you wanted to call a taxi or an Uber. You're almost always welcome to do that. This video is slowly turning into a top five pastelerias of Corteira, but hey, the one right behind me, Pastelaria Euro Latina, is my mum's favourite or one of my mum's favourite pastelerias. All right, guys, I'm gonna go head back home for a minute to eat my pastries and have lunch. I'm not having the pastries for lunch. Don't you worry. And then, yeah, we'll see what I've got planned for this afternoon. Bye. Hey guys, so I've returned home. Mum and my auntie have cooked me fried mackerel. I'm really lucky they're just boiling potatoes. They're gonna be frying them. And then we got a few nibbles here, very nice, and some salad. Nice, healthy lunch.
Hey guys, so as you've seen, my mum is treating me with a crepe and with ice cream. It was absolutely lovely. We are in the Schladeria Kruperia Luige by the seafront. It's very accessible, a little bit more spendy, but it is damn delicious. They have ice cream as well as sorbet, so highly recommend it. I don't know how this is going on, Charlotte. Someone has a drink and it's fucking adorable. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hey everyone, me again. So after that delicious ice cream, went back home, had a bit of a rest, and now we're back. Last thing I'm going to show you in Cortada is this really quick highway that you see over here. This road will take you directly to Hilamora and it is like doesn't take that long at all. You can walk it in 10-15 minutes. That massive hotel you can see is the Tivoli, which is a five-star hotel in Hilamora. So but this is the this is the way to get here by car. There's a lovely sports center here as well and I'll show you how to get there on foot. Yeah gotta love Portuguese surveillance cameras oh yeah here that's Quarteira behind me one of the best things about this pathway is that it's got free Wi-Fi as well so you can be walking down trying to pick what restaurant am I gonna eat just search it up online it's quite easy no need to do any login with phone numbers or anything and, that, and as you can see I'm in the Crown Plaza Hotel not the Tivoli but yeah and we've just entered Hilamura so doesn't take that long, right? So, tell me what you guys think about my mini tour of Quarteira. We are going to be living here very shortly, so we will be exploring all the bars and restaurants and the nuances. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and put down in the comments below if you've been to Quarteira or the Algarve and have you seen a sunset like this? That is. Pretty stunning. Alright, see you guys next time. Bye!